Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when describing the creation story, the story of Adam alayhi salam, Allah ta'ala tells us, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين that, and it is he, it is Allah Ta'ala who taught Adam the names, all of them. Now, there are several interpretations as to what these names represent. One is that Adam alayhi salam was gifted with the ability to invent names for random objects, things, trees, animals, etc. And the idea here is very beautiful, actually, when you think about it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is demonstrating that Adam alayhi salam has something called creativity. And this is something that we see in our children. Anybody who has kids knows that when your child gets to a certain age where they start to play with toys, they start to give them funny names. Oh, this is a something something. This is a, they, 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 they might take some clay, they put it together and they say, oh, this is a, and they give it a funny name. And subhanAllah, they have this creative ability where they want to name everything. And so subhanAllah, it seems to be the case, one valid interpretation seems to be that Allah Ta'ala endowed Adam alayhi salam with this amazing ability that he can name things. And then Allah Ta'ala mentions that he showed them to the angels and said, inform me of these names if you are truthful. And what did they say in response? Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim. Glory be to you, O Allah. We don't know except what you taught us. You are the all-knowing and the all-wise. The idea here is what? That subhanAllah, the angels are created in such a way where they don't really have creativity. When they're asked, invent a name. I don't know how to do that. I know what you taught me. Whatever you teach me, that, that's what I know. Whatever you tell me to do, then I'll do it. As Allah Ta'ala specifically says, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون That the angels, they never disobey in whatever, they never disobey Allah in whatever they're told. And they do whatever they're commanded. So they know how to receive instructions and carry them out. But in terms of this creative aspect, it seems to be not their particular forte. Wallahu ta'ala alam bisawab. And Allah knows best. Now, Creativity is a double-edged sword. Creativity can be very positive and very negative. Creativity, if left unchecked, can take you down a terrible road, but it can also take you in a very beautiful direction. So this is the issue that you have to now ask yourself. Why is it that Allah Ta'ala would give us this if it can be used in the wrong ways? And SubhanAllah, this is exactly what the angels were asking. The angels were wondering, why is it the case that you're gonna create somebody that has the ability to do evil. And as they say, That, are you going to place upon this earth these beings, these creatures that are going to do what? They're going to cause all sorts of corruption of the earth and they're going to cause bloodshed. Why are you going to do this? And subhanAllah, it seems to be the case that look, yes, they have creativity. Let me show you how they're creative and how they can also use that for good. It's not just that they're going to use it for evil, but they have the ability to do what? Use that creativity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this brings us to a question now that we have to ask about ourselves. The question that I want everybody to ask themselves, or a number of them, a number, a number of questions. And I want you to actually answer the question. Don't just like, say, oh, this is an interesting talk. No, actually answer in your own mind what the answer is, inshallah. The first question is this. Am I a creative person? Ask yourself, are you a creative person? That's number one. Number two, how do you express your creativity? The reason I ask that is because I believe that most people would think, oh, yeah, I'm a creative person, okay. How do you express it? That's where things get awkward. Uh, I don't know. How do I express my creativity? Do I express it? When was the last time I expressed it? Is there anything concrete that I can point to that demonstrates my creativity? I want you to ask yourself these questions. Question number three, how do you develop it? How do you develop your creativity? Because let's be honest, you might be a creative individual, but if you never work on it as an actual skill that requires development, then it will become stagnant or even worse, it will decay, it will become worse. So how do you develop this quality of creativity? Number four, how do you share your creativity with the world? It's one thing to keep it to yourself and say, oh, you know, I like to write this or I like to do that on my own, something that I enjoy. Well, it's very safe, isn't it, when you keep it to yourself? But you'll only develop if you actually put yourself out there for the world to critique and then you will actually be able to develop yourself and improve based on other people's reactions. You'll actually have multiple perspectives and then perhaps inshallah you'll develop. And then the fifth and final and most important question is this. 
How do you use your unique skills and your unique creativity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In what way do you use your creativity to express your faith, your Islam, your goodness, whatever you have to offer the world? Do you use it in a way that is going to call people to this deen, that is going to inspire others to be better people? And if you are creative and you don't actually put in the effort to use it, fi sabilillah, then isn't it the case that unfortunately it's going to be used fi sabil shaitan in the path of evil? Subhanallah, I gave this talk and I talked about this just in a previous khutbah. And someone came up to me and said, You know, brother, I want to get more involved in the masjid. And I said, Okay, so you should have been ready for the next question, which is what? What is your passion? What is your skill? What do you offer? What is your creative outlet that you're going to share with us as a community? And he was a little bit taken aback. He hadn't thought about it. And so I'm sharing this with all of you so that we all think about it. What do we offer? This attitude of it'll just happen is a very irresponsible perspective. Let's be real. Do you have this idea or this attitude when it comes to school? Oh, I didn't register for my classes, but don't worry, it'll just happen. Nobody thinks like that. I didn't study for the exam, but don't worry about it. I'll be all right, it'll just happen. No, anything you take seriously, you know that you plan out. So, ask yourself, how do you express your creativity? And the reason why it's so important is because if you do not become creative in expressing your deen, if this is something that you completely neglect, then by default, you will find that your Islam is going to become something very limited, marginalized, relegated to certain areas. For instance, there are some Muslims that are Muslim only in the masjid. My Islam is in the masjid and I don't apply it elsewhere. My Islam is on Friday, not any other day of the week. My Islam is when I pray, but not outside of the prayer. My Islam is when I give charity, but other than that, forget about it. My Islam is during Ramadan, but no other than that, you don't find any Islam. Why? Because you are not creative about it. You have to be a creative individual to think to yourself, in the extreme diversity of my life, in all aspects of my life, how does Islam apply? Yes, of course, it's very obvious that Islam applies in your salah. It's not very obvious. How it applies in the masjid is very obvious. But do you think about how you're going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to your wife, with regards to your children, with regards to your work? Do you think about how you will be pleasing to Allah ta'ala, how you will creatively come up with ways to apply your Islam at school and in your sports, in your exercise, in your food? These are going, this is going to require some creativity. And if you do not do this, then you will not be able to apply your Islam entirely. It'll be very limited. And Allah Ta'ala actually commands us and says what? Ya ladina amanu udukhulu fi silmi kafatan. Oh, you have believed, enter into Islam fully and completely, wholeheartedly, perfectly. In other words, your Islam should apply to every moment of your life. And if you do not, if you are very uncreative about it, and if you only apply to certain portions of your life, then you will find that the other portions will be overtaken by shaitan, as Allah says in the same ayah, just next, what does Allah say? وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ That do not follow the footsteps of shaitan, indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. So I hope the point is clear, that we don't want to just practice our Islam externally, in certain ritual actions. What about the internal? What about the way you feel? What about, about your attitude? What about jealousy and diseases of the heart that you need to uh, uh, d defend yourself against It's not in for certain places and not other places It's not for certain times and not other times Islam is for all the time And because your life is so diverse You're going to have to become quite creative To figure out how Islam, Islam is going to apply At every moment of every day Inshallah ta'ala So Inshallah ta'ala we will continue in the second khutbah Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad Wa ala wa sahbihi wa sallam sallam kithira Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa sallam ala rasulillah now, of course, when we talk about Islam applying to every moment, people will say, look, I'm a human being. At the end of the day, I'm going to fall short. I'm never going to be perfect that I can apply my Islam at every moment. And you're right. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ tells us so beautifully in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ I swear by the one in whose hands my soul is. I swear by Allah. لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُوا لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ وَلَجَاءَ بِقَوْمٍ يُذْنِبُونَ فَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ, فيستغفرون الله. فيغفر فيغفر لهم 
that the Prophet says what? I swear by Allah that if you were not to commit sins, Allah would sweep you out of existence. Allah would get rid of you. And He would replace you by people who would commit sins and then seek forgiveness, and then Allah Ta'ala will forgive them. In other words, you're not angels, you're never going to be angels. If Allah wanted more angels, He would create more angels. Allah created you a human being. So this means that in your attempt to apply your Islam at all moments, you will fall short. But that doesn't mean you quit. That doesn't mean you lose. This is, this is the nature of creativity. The creative effort is one that is full of failure. Think about any artist. They have to try so many times. They have to fail so many times at no matter what they're doing. There's so many attempts. Beauty is rare. Beauty is difficult. And so it's only natural that you have to apply and apply yourself over and over and over again and fail continuously until finally, inshallah ta'ala, you will produce something beautiful. And that's part of the process and that's okay. Why? Because we were created unique. We were created in a creative way with this creative ability. And part of that means to do what? To apply yourself in all ways, to try over and over again, to fail over and over again, but to keep coming with something more beautiful. Because you are the work in, in progress. You are the artwork that you're working on becoming a more beautiful individual. ta'ala. Another important aspect about this conversation about the creation of Adam is the topic of rights versus responsibilities. Because as we're mentioning, when you are a creative individual, since this can go either very good or very bad, it's very open-ended, it's a right that you've been given, but now you're also responsible for it. Because this is a right that you were given, that Allah endowed you with it, you have all this ability, you have free will to try to do anything you want. Yes, it's a beautiful right, but what are the responsibilities that come with it? We learn that Adam was placed in Jannah, and he was given first and foremost all the rights, and then only secondary a few responsibilities. How did that turn out? Allah Ta'ala says what? وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says, and we said, O oh Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat therefrom, in ease and abundance, from whatever you want. Go where you want, eat what you want, do what you want. All rights. What about responsibility? Just don't approach this one tree. Just this one little thing. Don't approach this one tree lest you become amongst the wrongdoers. What was the result of this? He ate from the tree, he failed, and Allah Ta'ala put him in a new circumstance on earth. And the circumstances of earth are, you could say, the exact inverse, the exact opposite, full switch. Instead of all rights first, and then just a few responsibilities, it's the exact opposite. It's all about responsibilities, and then you get some rights. For instance, on earth, you're gonna have to toil the land, you have to harvest and work hard. And then you're going to get some food. Then you get the right of eating some food. You have to work hard and build your home. And then you're going to have a nice place to live. You're going to have to work and provide for and love and take care of your family. And then you'll be treated as a leader. And then you will have a nice family. And then you'll be treated with love and respect and so forth. On earth, everything switched. And so we have to recognize this. And we have to instill this in our own children. We have to realize that if you spoil your children, then you're going to spoil them rotten. If your children are just given everything, we all know this, you give your, your child every toy he wants. Every time he whines about anything, you just give that child whatever they want. What happens? The child, the child becomes spoiled rotten. They become very, uh, you know, arrogant, you could say, or very uh, a spoiled brat, essentially. And this is very dangerous. And so what is proper parenting? Proper parenting is saying, I'm going to teach you some responsibilities and they're going to be followed by rights. In other words, clean your room, then you get something nice. Get this toy, whatever the case may be. This is what we learn from the story of Adam alayhi salam. This is what we learn from the contrast of Jannah to earth. How does this apply, for instance, to this country? A very common back and forth tug of war is between the right and the left. The right and the left. <laughs> In the United States, you find that the right-wingers are those who are always emphasizing personal responsibility. That's why they are very pro-army, because our troops are taking it upon themselves, putting their lives on the line to take care of the country. We're very pro-police, they say, right? Why? Because they're the ones who are taking the responsibility of keeping the citizens safe. And they are very much against government handouts. Why? Because you have to make your own money, work hard, be personally responsible. That's their attitude. Then you have on the left wing, all about rights. And this back and forth, this tug of war continues. Why? Because the left will say, what about the rights of this marginalized group? We need more taxes to help out these people. These people need more help. Whether they are be a religious 
whether they be a racial minority group, whether they be a sexual orientation group, whatever the case is, we need to take care of all these groups and make sure that they have their rights. And they have their rights and they have their rights. So you have this back and forth between the left and the right, always pulling and having this tug of war between rights and responsibilities. Now, I'm not going to make this khutbah about the political sphere. I want to just mention this so you have the idea in your minds from the macro perspective. Now let's zero it in on the micro perspective. Your relationship with this masjid. We just built this masjid, alhamdulillah. It's a new, beautiful masjid. And many people are wondering, what are my rights? Right? That's the question. What is this masjid offering me? What are you offering my children? What services are you offering for my wife? What are you offering me? What type of services? What type of programs? Tell me about my rights. But wait a second. I thought we understood that Adam alayhi salam was sent to earth. And earth is a place where it's about responsibilities first. And then you worry about rights. And so if that's the case, then maybe the question we should be asking is instead, how can I serve this community? In what way can I use my unique skills, my creative abilities? In what way can I offer something to this community that can benefit everybody? Put yourself out there. Make the effort to figure out what is your place in this community. I think this is what is necessary because this isn't paradise, we're on earth. And that's the emphasis we should have. And so I'll close inshallah ta'ala with this final point. <clears throat> Just last night, alhamdulillah, there was <clears throat> a group of brothers that decided to invite lots of people to come for a basketball game. Alhamdulillah, this is the masjid, we have a court. The youth want to play basketball, that's their right. Right, check, okay? However, at a certain point, the adhan went off. It was time for salah. And unfortunately, we don't have the speaker here uh, yet that they can hear the adhan, so they didn't know. But it's time for salah anyway. So that is their what? Their responsibility. Stop the game. I don't care who's winning or how intense it is. Stop the game as it is. And so I came in to this gym and started yelling, stop, stop, stop. It's time for prayer, time for prayer. I had to yell, yell, yell so much. So now you have rights and responsibility. And after all the yelling, one of the uncles came up to me and said, brother, instead of yelling so much, instead of screaming about time for prayer, time for prayer, just shut off the lights. It's nighttime, they won't be able to see anything. They'll have to leave for salah. That's creativity. So you got your rights, you got your responsibilities, and now you got your creativity. This is the way we want to move forward, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who, yes, we want to take, have rights in this masjid, but we think of this place as a place of responsibility. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who can participate and offer our creative skills for this community. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this community. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt. وتولنا فيما توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت ربنا آتنا في دنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سيما كثيرة وأقم الصلاة